How you doing? Going to do a wee black Zulu medley here for my pal Wallant. Hope you don't enjoy this. This is a Camus MB 170 size 10. It's already been tagged with silver mylar. I'm going to use some silver French oval. And it's for Vineyard, size 15. Low bright number four. Some black vike in a dubbing. I like to dub this on just roughly. Kind of half and half. Not too tight, not too slack. The reason for that is because it makes it easier to put out with a dubbing brush. This is just a wee small mate's feather off the saddle. I always start it at the top. So when you wind it round, the palmer goes from large to small as it goes from eye to bend. You get a better, better flow out of the fly in the water when you do that as well. Instead of going for a hackle that's all even.
couple at the front. There's a brown rib about in through the palmer, I'll wiggle it so as to not trap any fibres. And I give the fly the same amount of ribs as I do turns with the, the hackle for the palmer. So four turns. That's a nice wee match in neck. Love the curve in that. You get a really good cloak out of these necks. And that's what you're after with any wet fly. And then go about a quarter up once you've stripped all the rubbish off the back. And that gives you the access to the sweet spot. I call it the sweet spot because it ties in better and it looks better, sits better. Everything about the hackle is better, or the wing, doesn't matter, everything's got a sweet spot. And always make the hackle for the Zulu, any Zulu, really big, so it's going over the top of the, the Palmer. <coughs> And this is a good wee trick for you, Alan. See, so once you've tied it in at the side, see the top side of the hackle here? Just take your, your dubbing needle and go down the stem. Rub it down the stem. And then when you leave it go, you can see it stands out of my own. It's folded in. Makes your hackle wrap better, plus you got a better cloak off it. And for these lovely big hackles, I never ever use pla high hackle pliers, sorry. Don't need to. It's fine at that, two and a half wraps.
see if we gently just hit the hackle and the palmer a bit of velcro pushing it backwards makes it all blend a lot easier too that's another wee tip pal that's us ready for the deer hair black deer hair <coughs> Nine times out of ten, when somebody dyes deer hair, it's always belly hair they use, and I hate this stuff. It's absolutely murder, so, pardon me, I come up with my own solution to tying in deer hair because of this factor, and it's actually easier and simpler today, as Alan would explain to a number of you, if you asked him as well, because uh, he's recently used it and finds it much easier, and it ties a neater head as well, and it's easier to trim. What I always do before I start a muddler head though, I always put a half hitch or a full turn in there. That way nothing can come loose. Got a decent pinch of deer hair, depending on the size of head that you want. For a bob fly, I like a, a decent size head because nine times out of ten in Scotland you're, you're going to come up against a big rolling wave, so that's perfect. But you also get small heads like fish just with an wee ripple. And I tie them in size 14 short shanks, size 12 short shanks. Same flies. So really I just alter the size of the head depending on the size of the wave. But sometimes the big heads work in the wee ripples as well. Just getting all the bum fluff out of that. To anybody that's no Scottish, it's just the hair that you get in between the fibres. That's a Scottish term. And then what I do normally. People tie, tie deer hair in at the tips, but my method is turn it around and tie it in stem first. So we'll put it in the stacker. Get it all nice and straight. And what I do, I just come in, I try and find the centre of that, see how it's like a wee, a wee compact circle of the fibres, just try and find the centre of that with the eye, and then come in, the same way you would the tips, and then I just try and go roughly about the same size as a hackle, and then fold it all firmly, similar to you would tying in wing slips, and then just up, pinch and loop, and then tighten and down, tight again, and then round and tight. And what you do is, is you come in with your thumb into the front, just aim towards the eye, and then that way you're spreading out the fibres equally, and then just compress it slightly and wiggle it about. And then come in as normal. A couple of wee 
stones ready quick finish and what I do at this point is I just unloosen that and turn the fly up makes it easier to control the quick finish when the fly is setting up slightly because the eye is naturally pointing down Come in, get a wee half inch. One, two. And I know it looks awful messy like that, as in spider legs and everything, but really it doesn't get any easier than that, especially when you come to trimming it as well. And I just come in with the curved scissors and I go above the eye first and then turn keep turning and just keep trimming it the same the same way you started just follow that trim all the way around And then again and I lift the last couple of fibres out to trim them. And then at this point I come in with the hardies and just start start shaping your head. Be mindful that your hackles behind here to just take a couple of fibres at a time. No rush.
and then you just place a fly in the way it was when I started and then just bring the hackles back to normal. There you go, and believe it or not, I'm absolutely rubbish at muddler heads, and it's just practice and practice and practice, and to me that's fishable, it's still an absolute mess, so I hope that helps somewhat, Alan. All you need's fishable. That's all that matters. As long as you're catching fish, as long as people's catching fish, that's what it's all about. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed that. That's the Black Zulu Muddler. Thanks very much.